Hi, I'm Marius with Tuts Plus, and I'd like to introduce you to tags in OS X's Finder. I'll show you what they are, how to assign them to files and folders, and how they can help you stay productive. For starters, we need to get familiar with the concept. To tag a file, you can simply right-click it and choose a tag for it from the selection that appears in the contextual menu. That tag is now applied to the file. But what does that actually mean? What are we doing? To answer that, we need to look back to an often forgotten part of the OS X Finder called Labels, the predecessor to Tags. Labels have actually been a part of Finder since way back in 1991, and their goal has always been to offer a way to visually distinguish files by color coding them. This was great, but it was limited by the fact that you could only assign one label at a time, and you could only have a total of seven labels system-wide. With Mavericks, Apple upgraded the whole concept to a tagging system more akin to what you might expect to find in Evernote, where you can create your own tags and assign as many of them as you like to files or folders. To create your own tags, right-click that file again, but this time choose the Tags option instead of picking one of the colored dots. You'll see a new window appear with a text area that allows you to type in any tag name you want and have it applied to the file. To remove a tag, Simply hit the Delete key. But what if we want to modify the color, or change one of the existing labels for our tags? To do this, we need to flip over to Finder's Preferences, which you can access by going to the Finder menu, or simply using the command comma shortcut. From Preferences, navigate to the Tags tab, and you'll see a list of every tag on your system. You can change the label by right-clicking a tag. Colors can be assigned by clicking the dot. Unfortunately, you can't assign a custom color, so you're limited to one of the seven default hues. To change the order in which tags appear in Finder's sidebar, just click and drag them. Likewise, if you want to make sure you always have easy access to your favorite tags, drag them into the favorites area at the bottom. If you use a lot of tags, you can use the checkboxes to indicate which of them should show up in the sidebar and other tag lists, which helps keep those lists from looking too cluttered. Let's look at a few of the other ways in which you can assign tags to files. For starters, there's that sidebar I keep mentioning. In any Finder window, use this disclosure button to reveal a list of your tags. You can drag a file onto any tag to assign it. If you right-click a tag in the sidebar, you can change its label and color or remove it from the sidebar or even delete it entirely without having to go back to Preferences. Similarly, there's a dedicated Tag button in Finder that allows you to access the custom tag dialog we saw earlier. Needless to say, if you have multiple files or folders selected, you can use this button to assign tags to everything at once. Lastly, if you're using an application that takes advantage of iCloud and Apple's new document model, then you can add tags from the header, the same dialog that you use to rename the file. Once you've tagged some files, retrieving them is as simple as selecting one of the tags in Finder's sidebar. Every file with that tag, no matter what folder or hard drive it's in, will appear immediately. By using multiple tags, you can create a system that works in concert with your normal folder-based hierarchy of file management to help you access the files that you need more quickly without having to move them or create endless smart folders. Now that you know how to use tags, check out the article for some ideas and tips for integrating tags into your file management workflow. See you next time.